Today I will be recapping the most epic animation movie in 2024 called Chang'an. Spoilers ahead, relax and enjoy. When the Tubo's army waged war against the Tang Dynasty in the first year of Emperor Daizong's reign, they left everywhere in chaos, even the Enlushan's borders. The soldiers of Tang never saw this coming, not even Gao Shi, the governor of the Sikwan command. Just when they thought they had defeated the Tubos at the Yushan fort, Gao Shi notices another troop of soldiers advancing towards them. He warns his men to stop the war and find refuge in Lushi Pass as soon as possible. After arriving at Lushi Pass, Gao Shi learns that the Tubos have surrounded Chang'an, and the emperor already fled the capital with his court. Gao Shi is confused on what to do, but he must follow the orders of the emperor to defend Chang'an from the Tubos and chase them away. This is when Gao Shi decides to interrogate a Tubo prisoner whom the soldiers captured at Yushin. However, a soldier dashes in to inform Gao Shi of the presence of Cheng, the military inspector sent by the emperor. Gao Shi instructs his servant to receive him, while he interrogates the captive from Tubo. Instead of querying the prisoner, Gao Shi requests that the captive be tied in the cold, and then he attempts to kill himself for failing to protect Chang'an. Inspector Cheng finally arrives, and of course, Gao Shi prepares his mind to be executed. But Cheng surprises him with a series of questions. The emperor wants to know his connection with Lei Bai, an old friend who he sought to kill five years ago. This is when Gao Shi reveals his strong friendship with Lai Bai, which started after the loss of his royal parents at an early age. Firstly, Gao Qi talks about his formidable grandfather, who served Emperor Zong as the Northeast commander. His grandfather played a huge role in conquering two kingdoms and when he died, he was buried next to Emperor Zong. His father Gao Shun wanted him to be like his grandfather, so he placed a young Gao Shi to learn martial arts at the age of seven, and also made Gao Shi to go to school, so he can learn how to read and write. Gao Shi as a teenager became so good at martial arts that he even defeated his father at training. But unfortunately when Gao Shi clocked 16, his father passed away from a deadly sickness which made him an orphan because he lost his mother at birth. He was left with nothing but his martial skills. Gao Shi realizes that his father wasted everything his grandfather left behind, so he decides to travel to Chang'an just to restore his family's name and become an important official in court. However, the journey doesn't seem to be easy, and he runs out of food and money on the way. Fortunately, Gao Shi meets Li Bai, the young son of a wealthy merchant who accuses him of stealing a horse on the way. A fight between both of them ensues, but Li Bai realizes that Gao Shi's martial arts skills is too good for him to be a thief. He stops the fight right away to listen to Gao Shi's explanation, who clears out that he's not the thief, but instead, he saw the thieves pass him by with horses. Lai Bai runs off with Gao Shi horse to catch the real thieves, only to almost get killed by the second thief. Gao Shi comes to his rescue, saving him from the sword of the thief and this kicks off their relationship as friends. Although Lai Bai finds Gao Shi very formal, he thanks him for saving his horse. Lai Bai tells Gao Shi that the horse the thief wanted to steal is carrying something valuable to him. It is not silver or gold, but the remains of his best friend Wu Jinan, who he pledged to bury somewhere beautiful. Lai Bai comes from a family related to the imperial clan. He spends most of his times with the court officials giving them wise advices and strategies in hopes that they will one day recognize his talent and give him a post in court. After giving a hungry Gao Shi some meat to eat, Lai Bai pleaded with him to train him on how to use a spare. Lai Bai is so impressed on how he used it to take down the thieves like a flying dragon and promises to teach him the arts of resting in return. While he teaches Gao Qi wrestling, he demonstrated that the best way to defeat his opponents is by tricking them. At nightfall, Gao Shi teaches Lai Bai how to use a spare. Without wasting time, Lai Bai buries the remains of his friend and offers homage in his honor. This is when Gao Shi discovers the carefree yet emotional side of Lai Bai. They travel together to Chang'an, the capital, and Gao Shi learns more about Lai Bai. Lai Bai admits his plan to become a Taoist hermit in the future. Gao Xie attempts to discourage him from this hard decision, but the moment Lai Bai tells him of a quick shortcut to getting an official rank, he becomes happy. This shortcut, which is called passing the scroll, allows men of humble birth to write their best poems and become officials whenever a prominent official recommends them. A quick snap to present, the Tubo captive is still outside in the cold, and when he is about to breathe his last, two soldiers release him from the chains. They reveal their stance as supporters of the Tubos, telling the captive that Yan Wu, the new governor, will replace Gao Shai in two days and that the Tubos must conquer Chang and as soon as possible. Gao Shai is yet to finish his story, so let's see whether Lai Bai deserved death at his hands or not. The two find their way to the house of a prominent official, only for Lai Bai to be rejected because he is the son of a wealthy merchant, which is no different from the lowest class in the capital.
This rejection doesn't affect Lai Bai, and he goes with Gao Shi to the Yellow Crane Tower to drink all night. Right there at the tower, Lai Bai decides to write a poem, and he demands that his poem be put close to that of Kwai Hao, who was the best poet of the tower. On seeing Kwai Hao's poem, Gao Shi and the other guests become engrossed and praise the poet for writing so beautifully. This reignites Lai Bai focus on becoming an official, so he paths ways with Gao Shi and decides to go to Yangshao while Gao Shi decides to go to Chang'an. Gao Shi promises to visit him if he succeeds in Chang'an. As soon as he steps into Chang'an, Gao Shi discovers that his family's name has gone down the drain. Since no prominent official wants to mentor him, he opts to become a spear dancer, just to survive and find a chance to prove his worth. Fortunately, he gets selected to dance for Prince Qin at a banquet. This is his only ticket to becoming an official if he impresses Prince Qin and Princess Yuzhen. Gao Shi puts his best into this dance and even surprises everybody with a battle technique while dancing. However, Princess Yuzhen is not impressed with his dance because it looks a bit scary to watch. Gao Shi hides in a room and sulks about losing his chance, but he meets Yum Du Fu, a friend of Prince Qin, who reveals that Princess Yuzhen is only a fan of dance and music. Right in front of them, Princess Yuzhen recommends Wang Wei, a poet, who impresses her with his soothing music. The next morning, Gao Shi sees the others running off to receive their official ranks, and this hurts him. He is forced to save a sing-song lady from falling off a horse. They recognize each other from performing at the banquet. But Gao Shi is shocked when he learns that Lai Bei's poems are all over Chang'an just a year after their separation. At once, Gao Shi leaves Chang'an to Yang Zhao to see his old friend Lai Bai, who is now famous. On getting to Yang Zhao, he finds Lai Bai and is forced to accompany him to steal a beautiful maiden from a banquet. They escape on a boat, but their happiness ceases the moment some men sail behind them, searching for the maiden. Lai Bai, Gao Shi, and Pei Shi are no match for the men, and the maiden is taken away from them forcefully. This pains Lai Bai, but the maiden offers to dance one last time for him. In appreciation, Lai Bai offers her all the money on him and in addition his precious jade ring. Gao Shi wonders what happened to Lai Bai's ambition to serve as an official after seeing his old friend living a wasteful life on wine and women. But Pi Shi, Li Bai follower, thinks otherwise claiming Lai Bai is doing well as a renowned poet. Gao Shi is not satisfied with this, so he challenges Pei Shi to a fight. Surprisingly, Pei Shi defeats Gao Shi, revealing her identity as a woman and the daughter of General Pei, who is a great swordsman, yet reduced to a mere sword dancer. Pei Shi discloses to them that she is the only inheritor of her father's swordsmanship, yet she is a woman. Gao Shi feels ashamed at this defeat, and he opts to go to Shangqiu to train and regain his skills. Although Lai Bai wishes he stay behind in Yangshu and enjoy the night, Gao Shi's mind is already made up. The animation switches the scene to show a soldier reporting the presence of the Tubos in Lushi Pass, which means the fort will be destroyed in the next six hours if no action is taken. But Gao Shi seems to have a plan, so he tells Inspector Chang to relax and listen to the rest of his story. Well, let's see what made him a governor. In Shangqiu, Gao Shi trains his strength and his reading ability improves as well, as a village student tutors him. One day, the villagers bring a man to Gao Shi, claiming they found him gallivanting around the temple only for Gao Shi to see his old friend, Lai Bai. Both of them are so happy to see each other, but Lai Bai announces his current condition ever since he left Yangzhou. He fell sick in Yangzhou after his brothers denied him a share of their late father's property, making him an outcast, and now he is getting married to Chancellor Xu daughter. However, Lai Bai doesn't seem happy about his marriage because he wants to join his wife's family and live with them. Gao Shi opposes this idea, forcing Lai Bai to seek advice from Mian Horan, his friend in Xiangyang. Unfortunately, when they reach Tezian Gang, they discover that Mian Horan is on his way to Yangzhou to look for Lai Bai. Without delay, Lai Bai and Gao Shi run to meet Mian Horan before the boat sails off to Yangzhou. They see him from afar, and Lai Bai tries to get an answer from Mian Horan, but the wind disrupts their communication. Through the use of his writing skills, Lai Bai sends his message across to Mian Horan, who sends back a negative reply. Since nobody is supporting his plan to join his bride's family, Lai Bai drags Gao Shi to the Yellow Crane Tower to compete against Kwai Hao's poem again. But this time, Gao Shi part ways with him and joins the army. A little spoiler for you, this is not what brought Gao Shi to what he is today. All thanks to Gao Shi's strength, he defeats a frontline cavalry leader and gets appointed as the captain of another cavalry in Jizhou. On the orders of the emperor, the Jizhou army is after the kittens, and Gao Shi's cavalry is not enough to defeat them. The army never encounters the kittens, rather they keep getting lured into traps set by the kittens, so the emperor orders them to retreat.
This leaves Go Shai angry, and he makes up his mind to leave the army and settle for poetry. He heads to an inn and writes a new poem, narrating his experience in Jizhou. However, Lai Bai shows up again, locating him after seeing his new poem, which is now popular in Tang. Lai Bai tells Gao Shi how he got sidelined after the death of his father-in-law, and now, he is an apprentice of the Taoist master Dan Qiu. But Lai Bai reveals something more shocking, and Lushan, the northern part of Tang, is planning to launch an attack on Tang. The conversation no longer seems to be a secret when Gu Ziyi, the general of Longyuo, sneaks up on them. He threatens to kill Lai Bai for the knowledge of this secret, but the Pinglu army comes after all of them. Gu Ziyi is fearless, and he sends the army away with just one threat. Later that night, he reveals to Lai Bai and Gao Shi about his execution, all because he was blamed for a fire outbreak in a military camp. Gao Shi offers to save Gu Ziyi by begging Governor Jeshu Han to pardon him. Nights and days pass, yet there is no sign of Gao Shi, and the day of Gu Ziyi's execution creeps in. Lai Bai attempts to stop the execution officers, but he is not strong enough to defeat them. This is when Gao Shi shows up with the governor's pardon, and they save Gu Ziyi from getting beheaded. The two friends spend time in solitude, wondering what to do next. Gao Shai reminds Li Bai of their first meeting ten years ago, and this prompts Lai Bai to set another date in the next ten years. Gao Shi returns to Shangqiu again and retires to writing poems. Serving the emperor seems like a far-fetched ambition because all the prominent officials wanted praise from people rather than poems. Every prominent official avoids Gao Shi, like a plague because of the poem he wrote in Jizhou. Ten years later, Lai Bai sends him a letter, informing Gao Shi of his acceptance into court on recommendation of Princess Yuzhen. He invites his friend to Chang'an, so he can follow this shortcut to become an official. Gao Shi arrives at Chang'an to meet fans of Lai Bai scattered around his gate. He even reunites with Du Fu, the young man from Prinsky's banquet. They discover that Lai Bai is at the Kujiang house, drinking wine and frolicking with maidens. At the Kujiang house, Gao Shi sees Lai Bai, who is too drunk to remember he invited him. This makes Gao Shi disappointed at Lai Bei's drinking habits, taking his lead back to Shangqiu. Years later, Du Fu visits Gao Shai in Shangqiu, alongside another man with an old gate, it's Lai Ba, and for the first time, he is sober. The court is no longer his favorite place as the emperor's consort dislikes him, and his wife is now dead. So Lai Bai decides to be a Taoist priest, and he asks Du Fu and Gao Shi to support him in his ordination. Right at the Taoist temple in Jinan, Gao Shi and Du Fu support Lai Bai, both under the rain and the scorching sun until he receives his ordination belt. They celebrate this achievement with a feast of drinking wine until dawn, but Gao Shi opts to leave for Longyuo and serve Governor Jeshu Han as a military secretary. It hurts Lai Bai to see his friend leave, so he challenges him to a wrestling duel. Gao Shi accepts to wrestle with Lai Bai, and just like the old times he wins. In Lan Yuo, Gao Shi serves the governor as a secretary in the war against the Tubos. Despite 30,000 soldiers controlled by Geshu, the Tubos kept them locked in the stone fort for a year. Gao Shi continues his job as a secretary, and he sees Li Bai again in Xangyang, where he hears the news of his new wife and fame. Moreover, Tang is falling apart, and many generals start to envy the throne. Now there is division in the country as Ian Lushan has defected from Tang. Even Jeshu Han becomes paralyzed during battle, but he refuses to become a traitor like the other defectors. There is no one to succeed him, so he opts to kill the traitors one after the other. He begs Gao Shi to escape and tell the emperor of the traitors in Tang. When Gao Shi enters Chang'an, he sees the city in complete chaos, making him chased after the court that has fled the capital. Six months later, Tang changes for good when Emperor Daizong assumes the throne, and Gao Shi becomes the governor of Sikwan Command. However, trouble looms again as Prince Yang, the son of Emperor Xuanxing, plans to rebel against Gao Shi and take control of the Sikwan command. To achieve this, he begins to gather allies, both generals, royals, and poets. You guessed right, Li Bai is an ally of Prince Yang and he dedicates eleven poems to the prince, praising his victorious spirit. Luckily, Gao Shi manages to execute Prince Yang, and all his allies face execution for committing treason. Even Lai Bai is not excluded from this death row, despite his claims of innocence. Lai Bai's wife offers to retire to Mount Lu and live in solitude, but Gao Shi locks Li Bai in prison, refusing to release him out of fear that negative rumors of their friendship will spread. This brings the consistent intervention of Gu Ziyi, who intercedes to the emperor on Lai Bai's behalf. Inspector Chang believes that Gu Ziyi's intervention is the reason behind Gao Shi's anger against him. In case you've forgotten, Gao Shi had something up his sleeves, and maybe this is the perfect time to reveal it. 
Gao Xiai is not injured as you thought, and the blood stain on his neck was only a ploy to delay time, get all troops of the Tubos closer to the walls of Lushui, and then defeat them. Moreover, Yan Wu and his reinforcement troops are on their way already. This means there is no escape for the Tubos anymore. Inspector Cheng finally sees Gao Xi's plan and is excited that the governor could execute such a plan to save Tang. After the intense war, Gao Xi is demoted and set to leave Lushui, only to hear the good news that the emperor granted an amnesty to release Lai Bai from exile. And as for Du Fu, Gao Xi finds out that he is safe in Yangzhou. Although he wanted to keep the secret that he convinced Gu Zi to intercede for Lai Bai, Inspector Cheng already knows about it. However, Gao Xi returns to writing poems in Shangxiu only to be called again to serve as imperial advisor of Bo Hai, just a year after the death of his friend Lai Bai. As for Tang, it remained so peaceful even after the death of Gao Xi, and that was how the movie ended. Thank you for watching guys. If you love animation movies, please subscribe to this channel and keep watching. Bye.